Good morning and welcome everyone to today's webinar, How to Leverage Data Insights with the Splice Dialog Controller. My name is Chelsea Kafer, Client Marketing Specialist here at Splice, and I'll be your MC for this presentation. I'd like to start with a couple of housekeeping items. Our webinar today will be 30 minutes long. All questions will be facilitated through the Q&A window that should appear on the right-hand side of your screen. You may submit your questions or comments at any time during the presentation, so there's no need to hang on to them until the end when something comes to mind. However, all questions will be addressed during the allotted time at the end of the presentation. The recording slides will be provided within seven days, and we hope you'll feel free to share them throughout your organization. Now, to introduce you to our speaker. Tracy Bradley is the Director of Client Success at Splice Software. Tracy joined the Splice team in 2012 to lead the client success team and to provide valued client input for business and product development. Prior to Splice, Tracy perfected her communications expertise through senior level project management and marketing positions at Kirk Marketing, The Brick, and CFCW. Her contributions extend to the community as well as a current board member and vice president of marketing at the Credit Institute of Canada, Calgary chapter. Tracy holds a Bachelor of Commerce in Marketing from the University of Alberta and has attended many additional professional courses in leadership, customer service, and negotiations. Thank you, Chelsea. Welcome everybody to the webinar today. Um, I do, uh, I, I want to just call out, we have a very short amount of time today, so we have 30 minutes. Uh, there are going to be sections of the dialogue controller that we're going to move through very quickly. So I'd just like to re reiterate what Chelsea mentioned about the Q&A tab. You should see it on the right-hand bottom side of your screen. If you do have questions, get them in there and we'll make sure we address them at the end. So a quick overview of our agenda for today. We're gonna take a look at preferences, quick understanding of why we collect preferences and how we need to be using them once we actually have those collected. The Splice Dialog Controller is a facilitator of the collection of preferences, so an understanding of what we might wanna use those for is really important just going into looking at the data and the charts. We're gonna go straight then into a dialog controller overview. If you have been in there before, you will know that there's a bunch of charts and a bunch of data. Um, so we're gonna cover all of those things, some high level, some in more detail. And again, any questions that you have, we will address at the end of the webinar. And then the learning. So we provide reports for a reason. <laughs> we give you guys the data and the reports to try and get some data insights out to you so you can make decisions on your campaigns on a go forward basis so they can be continually, uh, continually improved. So why do we collect preferences? Well, the important thing uh, to start with here is that there is a difference between a permission and a preference. Um, so a permission is somebody who says, yes, contact me, no, do not contact me. So they are giving you a permission as to whether or not you can contact them at all. A preference is an additional piece that gets added onto a permission as to how, where, when somebody would like you to contact them. So primarily today we're talking about uh, our retail uh, implementations and our VIP programs. Um, so talking to people about a event or a loyalty or how they've been a valued customer versus something that might be more transactional like an account notification. Um, so those preferences are really important in making sure that we can communicate with as many customers as possible. And they also expand to prospects. So prospects who might have an interest in doing business with your company in the future also can provide permissions and preferences to you that can be managed within the dialogue controller. The overall goal of collecting a permission and preference is to create a better level of engagement with your customers. So customers tend to respond better when they are receiving messages in their channel of preference. So if they told you, I want to receive my VIP invitations over email, they will respond better over email than over phone or SMS. Again, if they have provided you with that permission and preference to do that invitation over the phone, they are more likely to come in and make a purchase if you communicate with them in that channel. So we do really want to make sure that we are managing those permissions and preferences responsibly so that we can optimize our customer engagement. 
I want to make a quick note as well on implied data or big data. People love to talk about big data and there's a lot of it, hence why it is called big data. The thing about that and implied data is it's not specifically provided by a customer for a specific purpose. So it is data that is out there, um, but it's not specifically provided. What we are talking about today, the permissions and preferences managed in the dialogue controller are specifically provided by a client for a specific outcome. Um, implied data can get messy and unwieldy. Uh, if you would like to talk about talk to us about how you would like to incorporate that into your programs, we'd be happy to talk about it. We're just not really going to cover it today. So the number one thing I think of when I think about preferences is that great Spider-Man quote, with great power comes great responsibility. So what we've had now is we've had a bunch of our customers tell us, I want you to communicate to me in these channels for these things, and if we don't respect that, it's probably going to be worse than collecting the preference in the first place. So we really want to make sure that we are on an ongoing basis using those preferences responsibly, and that is supported by the Splice Dialog Controller. So if you have been, uh, I think most of the attendees we have on here today are our current clients. Um, and so some of you have probably seen these screens already. Um, some of you maybe not. So what I'm actually going to do right now is I'm going to jump into um, actually a live demo. It's going to look pretty much like that last slide. as soon as we get into the controller. So all of our current clients, this is the landing page that you see when you log into the Splice portal. And you go into the director by default. And there's this awesome additional tab at the top here called controller, dialog controller, which is what we're talking about today. So if you click right into there, you're going to see all these beautiful charts like we saw on that last slide of the deck. So I'm going to quickly walk through um, what each of these charts is showing you, what you can accomplish with each of the data exports. And again, I'm going to promote that. Leave your questions in the QA box, and we will address them at the end. So at the top line here, you are seeing a bunch of pie slash donut charts. Um, these are built to give you an understanding for each channel that you're communicating in, where your customers are falling. Can you communicate with them? Can you not communicate with them? Through what means can you communicate with them? It's a little bit different when we talk about phone calls. So that's what all of these four are at the top. So to dive right into it, we have the land mobile chart right on the very top left. And what this one is telling you is, what percentage of your database is mobile, and what percentage of your database is landline. Now, for our VIP programs, we are VIP programs to confirm in the United States. Based on the legislation there, we are not allowed to call mobile phones for those programs. And therefore, if you were looking at your data and looking at these charts, you would see in this scenario, we have a little bit more than 50% of those phone numbers that are mobile. Now, when you're looking at that, you want to make sure that you can address that. If you know that you are losing all of those mobile phone numbers for your VIP events, they're not necessarily not good people to contact. They're just not contactable with the automated splice calls. So you want to make sure you look at having some kind of mobile strategy to ongoingly communicate with those people. The donut is further broken into some different shades of colors um, to give you an understanding of where you might already have opt-ins or opt-outs. Now, an opt-out is just something we really need to respect, and if someone says, I do not want to be called or I do not want to be contacted by email, um, we don't want to contact them. It's just it's going to be good for nobody. So in the very darkest shades here, you have those people that are opted out. Now, like I said, an opt-out is an opt-out. There's not too much we can do about that. Um, we can always give them the opportunity to opt in again. Um, but those are really the segments that you are just straight off losing when you are running any campaign. The middle shades are the people that are falling into that, what we call that existing business relationship or the EBR. Um, that's people who have an, a valid warranty, people who have made a purchase in the last 18 months. So these are the people that fall into these categories. Um, so this medium green, 
that, that mobile category that is within an EBR are those people that we are losing. So in this scenario, we have like 376,000 customers that we are losing, uh, that we are not contacting on a VIP basis. That's a lot of people. So we want to talk about what are the strategies behind contacting that group to make sure they're still included in those types of programs. These little light shade guys are really your favorites. Those are the people who are opted in. So regardless of whether or not you're running any different type of program, they have told you, I would like to receive communications from you, and therefore you can call all of those people. So it is a really big segment in this group, which is great. Um, and that's always our goal, is trying to get to that place where we have a very good percentage of people who are opted in, so we know we can communicate with them on an ongoing basis. Moving right along over to the right, uh, we have the split out for just specifically calls. Um, we have the opt-in category like we talked about already. You can communicate with those people with any type of call, so whether it be a live call or an automated call, you can always communicate with this big green pie right here. Opt-outs are the people that you can't communicate with either of those channels, live or automated. And so that purple pie is just something that you are, again, on an ongoing basis going to lose. Having in-store programs or online programs where people can continually opt back in is going to be a way that we can address those opt-outs. So then the top two pies are really where we want to talk about different strategy options. So we have the blue pie, which is the automated calls, which is what Splice does with the pre-recorded messages. And then we have an orange pie, which is people that qualify to be contacted, but they don't qualify to be contacted versus the automated pre-recorded calls. So they can be communicated with via live calls, whether that is a call center that you have, a sales reps right in your stores, or Splice also has a partnership with a call center, uh, so we can facilitate that as well. But that's a, like that's about 25% of the pie, right? So again, that's usually a group of customers that are getting missed and not communicated with on a uh, per campaign basis. So you can just try, you can just start to see who am I communicating with? Is it a big enough percentage of my database? Do I need to look at any other sections of my database to see if I need a separate strategy to communicate with those people? We have clients that have about um, probably closer to like 38% of their customers that are falling into that orange category and they're just getting ignored and nobody is communicating with them. So there's a big opportunity with some of those groups. Um, Splice can help you identify those groups and just to make sure that you have a plan to address the full pie of people instead of just a very small like 15 to 20 percent of the pie that you're currently reaching with the splice automated calls. And uh, to the right again, we have the SMS and we have the email, so that's a similar, um, covering a similar thing as the calls, but just for those specific channels. So it will tell you how many opt-ins do you have for SMS, how many opt-outs do you have, how many opt-ins do you have for email, how many opt-outs do you have, um, just so you know what your list size looks like. So if you're going to say, I'm going to do an email to everybody, then I am going to be able to email 597,000 people. I can create budgets off of that. I can create expectations off of that. I can create anticipated traffic off of that. and so. Again, this is where you, you just get a full view of what can I do, and then I can make sure that I have strategies to address each of those different areas. So if we move down a level, we have some pretty multicolored bar charts now that are existing. And so the first one on your left is the opt-ins by group. So if you take a quick look between the two charts, you can see that the colors match. So we have like this light green, which is outbound, POS, which is the light blue. So the, the two charts can be, they can help you read across the two charts. And so what you're looking at in the one on the left is your top 10 stores that have collected opt-ins. So it's really helping you identify who is doing this the best, which of my stores is getting the most traction in collecting opt-ins. And obviously with that information, what you can do is you can uh, create training programs and things of that nature to say like, oh, hey, Ontario and Washington, D.C., you guys are doing an awesome job at creating opt-ins. What are you doing? Like, what 
what are you saying to customers in the store or uh, in your messages to create that level of engagement, um, and how can we roll that out as a potential training program to the additional store or to the, like, let's say the Calgary store to say, hey, Calgary, we want you to do these things so that you can improve the amount of opt-ins that you are collecting. An important thing to note on this, and um, there's probably those of you on the call right now that are like, what if I have more than 10 stores? <laughs> yes, um, that's a great question. I will just pre-answer it, is that this is only ever going to show you your top 10 stores. So if you have like 98 stores, then you're only ever going to see your top 10. Now, we do have an uh, additional add-on service called the Splice Leaderboard. We've probably talked to some of you about it. Some of you might be using it already. Uh, what the leaderboard allows you to do is see, again, by channel, all of your stores so that you can compare them um, every store to every store. A cool functionality that the leaderboard also has that this doesn't have, like this is a very mass high level amalgamated view. Uh, what the leaderboard allows you to do is do a percentage of increases. So you have different stores and they're all different sizes and they have a different amount of traffic. And if you are a, a huge store that gets a lot of traffic, you're just going to by default get more opt-ins because you have more opportunities to do that. The leaderboard actually provides a functionality where you can look at the opt-ins as a percentage of the traffic. So you could say it kind of just normalizes that for the small stores versus large stores. So like potentially, if we looked at this one right now, maybe you know, like logically, Calgary is just a smaller store, so they're actually killing it on opt-ins because they're getting 95% of people opted in, whereas Ontario is only getting 80% of people opted in. They're just a bigger store. So that can be facilitated with the leaderboard. Now, of course, with the knowledge you have about your own stores, you can add that logic layer on top of the opt-ins by group um, just by looking at it right now. Um, but if you did want to get that, like, wholesome view of what all the stores are doing, talk to me about the leaderboard, and uh, we, we, can, we can do something else for you. The last one that we have on the right here is unique opt-ins by channel. So obviously, we are always promoting that we want to um, we want to collect opt-in wherever possible. So not all of your customers are interacting with you on a phone call. Not all of your customers are act are um, actively involved online. Um, some do like an online search and then come into the store. What we want to do with the opt-ins is provide people whenever they're touching our brand to give them that opportunity to opt in. So this is what we've done in this scenario here. Um, if you're looking at a dialogue controller of your own, it will only show the channels that you are using. So if you are only using splice calls, then you would only see the inbound and outbound channels right here. But if you are using your point of sale system or these ones that you see right here, the splice phone email SMS, those are the splice tablets, so the in-store registration program. Um, web, obviously, is if you have an online place where people can log in, uh, paper VIP, we still have customers that are using paper VIP or paper contest forms to collect consent, um, so this is kind of like just the data entry uh, that is happening associated with that. But what it allows you to see is which of your channels are doing the best job at collecting those opt-ins. Uh, now, an important thing to note again on top of that is for most of our customers who are using POS, POS looks huge, and that's because they're actually effectively communicating with every single person who comes in and buys something to opt in. So that is where you get the highest amount of touches um, and the most, like, you're having a one-on-one -on -one relationship with that salesperson at the time, so the value prop can be really easily communicated. That actually generally looks huge once people are using that category. Um, but you can use this information then to really get a good idea of, of where are my opt-ins coming from, do I need to optimize certain channels. So Splice inbound I would mostly just ignore. It's an opportunity for people to call in. You need to be like really, really excited about being a VIP to actually call into the inbound and then opt-in. Um, but if you were looking at this and you're like tablet, 
um, the options you were collecting on the tablets were really low. Then what we'd want to look at is say, okay, well, what are, what's our training program? How are we using them in the, in the stores to get a better understanding of, of what's happening to see if we can improve that. Uh, we are consistently doing that with the outbound calls as well. We want to use those to collect the opt-ins. So we want to make sure that that is optimized in the scripting and the processing and everything like that. And so this piece of the dialogue controller can really help you understand which of my channels are killing it, which of my channels should I put some effort into to get something more out of it. Okay, so that is the visual information. But there's also a whole bunch of data that goes into feeding these charts. So we give you guys the opportunity to export that data as well. So I'm going to just pull up a quick example of what any of the, uh, the exports look like. They all look very similar. Uh, they don't all have all of the columns, but they are all very similar. So just to give you a quick overview of what you're looking at, um, everything that we have is exported in these lists. So profile ID, the location they're related to, if they have purchase date or warranty expiry dates on them, their names. Uh, their phone number, email addresses, all the modified dates. But then the most important thing is the opt-in, opt-out categories. So in terms of reading these charts, uh, if you have a true, that means you have an opt-in. If you have a blank, that means that you neither have an opt-in or an opt-out. So this is sometimes something that gets a little bit confusing, is that there are three statuses that you can actually have in terms of permissions. You can have people who are just people, and we communicate with them within that existing business relationship. You have people who are opted in, which means we can communicate with you for everything forever until you opt out. And then you have people here that would show up as false, and that would mean anybody who has opted out. Um, we also keep track of the sources. So again, if you have are importing uh, opt-ins to us, or reg is something uh, we use for our tablets. So if you see reg on your exports, that's something that's been collected on the Splice tablets. Um, and we have those three different categories we talked about. So we have phone, we have email, and we have SMS. They are all managed separately. So phone opt-in is not, by default, an SMS opt-in if it is a mobile phone. Uh, there's a phone opt-in and an SMS opt-in held separately. So it really is a great way to just really effectively manage what your opt-ins are. If you would like any additional help reading these reports in more detail, uh, let me know and I can definitely walk you through it. So in order to make your lives as easy as possible, and we continually add new reports in here for our clients if you have a specific need, so just let us know. Um, but we have our customer profile updates report. What that one is is a list of customers who have updated their profiles with you in the last X amount of days. So you can see you can choose your different day ranges here. Um, what that report really tells you is, um, it gives you an understanding of how often people are updating their data. So if you have a lot of people that are updating their email address or phone number every, t um, every time they touch you, it might be an indicator of not great data cleanliness. So it's just kind of a, a flag if those lists, when you're exp exporting them, are always really large. We have a tablet check-in report. for So for those of our clients who are using the in-store check-in method, method um, what you could do is you could say, okay, so for my last my event that happened last weekend, who all checked in on the tablets? Um, so it is just a full list, again, with all of those different columns of the people who checked in uh, during a certain time window. Um, important note here, so the tablet check-in report on here by default only shows um, well, I mean, it shows everybody who's checked in, but it doesn't tell you if you're using multiple channels to invite people. So if you're using a, like phone calls and emails and SMS, this report by default will not tell you what channel that person originated from. We have additional um, sample traffic reports that we uh, can provide for you in that scenario. Um, so again, if that is something you are looking at, just let me know. We have a whole bunch of opt-in lists. So these lists are just a list of anybody, again, within the X range that opted in. Um, that can include phone, email, and SMS. 
So the all opt-in list includes all of them. Phone, email, and SMS can also be broken out individually if you just wanted to see a specific channel. Um, and then the last one is the store channel opt-in list. And so this is kind of a, a sneaky, um, it's more of a summary report. If you want to take a look at it, and I just pulled one up here, um, for your stores, how many uh, opt-ins have been collected by channel um, and a total. So it's more a summary report of that all opt well, it is, in fact, a summary report of that all opt-in report. So instead of you diving into that data and doing fancy pivot tables and all that kind of stuff, um, this is just an export here that you can grab for a certain time window. So if you want to look at it monthly, you can just grab it here and, uh, and pull it out. And those are the, uh, those, that's the dialogue controller. And so I feel like, I know I've been working on this 30 minute window thing and it feels, uh, it always feels a little bit fast. So I'm just gonna, um, just gonna pass it back to, uh, perfect. Yeah, right, okay, I've got it. Thanks, Chelsea, for questions. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thanks, Tracy. Um, so now's the time, as Tracy mentioned, we'd like to open the floor for uh, any questions now. So for those of you who haven't already done so, please type your questions in the comment box on the right. Um, and I'm going to pause for a minute and wait for those questions to come in. All right, we just had um, a few questions come in. So, um, Tracy, the first question is, during the demo, you mentioned opt-outs. So, when a customer opts out, is it assumed it's only in the one channel or all channels? Can you explain a little more on how it's separated? Oh, yeah, great question. Um, so, a opt-out and or an opt-in is associated with a specific communication or um, well, a specific Hmm, what's the word I want to use? It would be related to a specific phone number and or a specific email address. So it's not related to a profile as a whole. So like myself, I have a full profile. I have my name, address, phone number, email address, um, past purchase information. All, I have all of that in my profile. But a opt-in or an opt-out is associated with a specific phone number or a specific email address. So you could, in theory, have two phone numbers on a customer's account, and one of them could be opted in and one of them could be opted out. So overall, you would still have an opt-in for that profile, but that specific phone number would be opted out. Perfect. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, the second question here is, can you provide some examples or customer success stories where channel preferences have increased campaign results, so something like a response rate? Um, we do, I mean, it's very different by every single client. Uh, we are actually in the process of working on a case study right now for that. Um, but what we have noticed, so what we, what we do uh, on behalf of our clients for every um, campaign that you run, as if you provide us, um, well, if you're using the tablets, then we have the traffic. So like I said, you by default would get the traffic. But unless we have that really to compare to sales data, uh, it's hard to say whether or not an opt-in group, uh, they might be responsible for a lot of traffic, but they may or may not be contributing in terms of sales. Now, based on the clients we have run this report for, the opt-in group is the primary group that comes in on a day and is buying something. Um, so. I don't have specific numbers, but based on a buy client analysis for the specific clients we have done it for, that opt-in group is more likely to both come in and make a purchase. Awesome. Um, so with time in mind, I'm just going to go with our last question. And the last question is, will there be other webinars on areas, other areas of the dialogue suite, like the dialogue controller? 
Um, yes. So we always try to just support what our clients are looking for and needing. So I would encourage you guys to reach out to me. Um, we're going to send a follow-up email with my contact details. If you don't already have them, I think most of you probably have it. Um, but reach out to me if there's any specific training on the dialogue controller, or even your campaign reports, or anything that you see that could help you get more insight out of things. That's what the client success team is here for. So we want to make sure that you guys know that. Just reach out to us. So we always like to customize our future webinars based on that client feedback. Um, so reach out to me. Um, I also have time in mind, but I did also see something come through just on my chat in terms of questions. So I'm just going to quickly address that one as well. Um, it's a question, do we load the preferences in advance um, so we know how to use Splice? That's a really great question. So when we have a new relationship with a, a customer, we actually do a preliminary data analysis. Actually, we, we offer to do this also for you before we even have, um, have a signed agreement because we want to be able to help and coach you on whether or not is Splice what you want to use, um, is a different channel or service provider something you want to use. So we provide that in advance. It is not done on the dialogue controller because the dialogue controller is, is a licensable, uh, a licensable piece. So, um, that base for everybody who is not using it right now, there is a cost associated with it. Um, it is based on your usage of Splice already in terms of volumes. Um, so again, if, you, if you're like, what's the cost of this? Let me know and uh, we can talk about it. Um, but we do preliminary data analysis for all of our prospects and clients uh, to give them this, you don't get all the pretty charts, but you get the same insight uh, out of it to say, this is how many people you could communicate with in this channel. This is how Splice can help you with this segment. We can help you strategize about additional segments and things of that nature. So we do always encourage, and even if you're a current client not using the dialogue controller, we could do that same analysis for you um, as a one-time analysis. So we could at least have a starting point to see if this is something you want to move forward with. So again, to reiterate, my contact details, if you don't have it, are going to be in those follow-up emails. So I really encourage you to reach out. And if there's anything in here that has, like, piqued your interest today, um, let me know, and I'm really, really happy to talk to anybody about it. Great. Well, thank you, Tracy, for all of your answers. And uh, that wraps up all the time we have for today's webinar. So on behalf of myself, Splice, and Tracy, thank you all for joining us. And as an attendee, you'll receive a follow-up email in the following week with the webinar recording and slide deck that you can share out. If any of your colleagues were unable to join today's webinar, feel free to also pass along these resources. Take care, everyone. Happy Data Insights, everyone.